I'm Steve for This Week With Cars, and this is my Stuart Stevenson LMTV Overland Camper. I have a lot more work to do, and I hope by the end of the week I can have this down at the local Jeep show where I can camp out in it while I'm wheeling with friends. Let's get started. My plan is to mount with some angle iron these channels to the frame of the camper. Once those are mounted to the camper, then I can straighten everything on the truck chassis and get the camper straightened out. Angle irons in place. The channel has been centered both this way and this way, ready to make a bead across the top to hold it all together. Then the channel can be taken out, everything welded together properly. Then I'll set it back in, weld it across here. The channel's flipped upside down right now, so the camper, these are those brackets so that they could be completely welded. And then we have a center line here and another piece of angle iron is going to go right here and that's going to captivate this channel from moving side to side on the frame. Right now this channel is upside down. It will make more sense in a second. It's pretty hot working out here today. So I put the awning out for the first time. That awning really comes out a distance and I think it really makes the R-Pod look at home up there. Here it is, these channels are for the truck and these channels are for the camper. Once we get this set in there, it won't be able to move side to side anymore. And these will also secure the camper fore and aft to the beam. Now that the rear is completed, I can explain better how this is going to work. So now the channel is welded to the trailer frame. So the channel is not going anywhere compared to the trailer. And this piece of angle iron was welded on based on the center line of the channel so that these are definitely centered within the channel, which will help for centering the camper onto the truck chassis. You can see that there's a big gap right here. I'm going to be filling the gap with wood. That way it's not metal to metal contact there. And eventually when I'm ready to mount it this way, there'll also be a piece of metal sitting here between the channel and the truck frame. On the other side of the truck, you see there's no gap there between the angle iron and that's because the camper is not sitting centered on the truck yet. I need to pick the camper up with the forklift and get it centered on the truck frame and then measure what the gap is going to be on each side and make a little piece of wood that can slip in there and that will keep everything centered side to side. On the front of the truck, I have a piece of wood above the channel for now to level the camper out. But the next step is to actually weld this up onto the camper frame, just like it is on the rear. These blocks of wood will have to temporarily go between the channel and the truck frame to keep everything level until I can move on to the next stage, which is insetting these channels into the truck frame to level it out correctly. The channel on the front is done now. You can see I've moved the boards between the frame and the channel just temporarily. And once this is welded across up here on both sides, I can take the board off, set it back down onto the truck check my clearances here and see if that's the position I want it to be. If it is, I can cut a little notch out of the frame back here to level everything out. It's all sitting down on there now. The hole for the septic is cut there. And then there's a hole that the channel is sitting in in the rear. And that drops the rear so that everything sits level. It will also prevent the rear from either going forward or back and side to side now. So for now, I'm still going to use the straps to hold it down until I can get to building the next phase of how this is going to work. The wood blocks are in place now. They're on all four corners, which means the camper is actually centered on the truck now and it's pretty much in the final position. Now that the rig is in a state that I can use it, I want to install some solar panels because I will not be camping at campsites usually. Usually I'll be boondocking off-road somewhere. So having solar panels is a very important thing on an overlanding vehicle. Before I climb up on the roof and install a solar panel, I'm going to go inside and install the solar charge controller. All our pods come pre-wired for solar, so if you did not get solar installed on your camper originally, all the wiring should be there to do so. 
So here is the solar charge controller that goes right there. This is not a very advanced solar charge controller. This is pretty cheap. The one that I installed in the 6x6 and the M35 Overlander is much more advanced than this. But because this is where they put the wiring, I wanted a real nice flush look to it. So I went ahead and got the one that they recommend putting there, which will be flush with the wall, just like all the other panels that are here. And it looks like this yellow line is the line that I have to cut out because this is the 30 amp controller. If I only ordered the 10 amp controller, I'd be cutting out these white lines. Let's cut this out and see what's behind it. So it looks like they have some kind of laminate over a thin piece of wood. The wires are tucked back in here. Here are the two that I was looking for. They're even labeled solar positive and negative. And the way that this works, you just cut these wires in half and then put the solar charge controller in between. This end runs up to the solar panels and this end runs down to your batteries. On the back of this controller, we have battery one, our positive and negative, and then from our solar panels, positive and negative. And if we wanted to charge a second battery, we could. What this controller will do, will charge the first battery completely. And only if that is charged, it will start to charge a second battery as well. I'll cut this wire and get this installed. And we'll go up on the roof and install the solar panel. I just noticed that Forest River did put the sticker in the wrong spot. You see that black pipe there? Well, that prevents this from sitting flush. It actually needs to be mounted over here. I cut the hole so that this fits as close as it can to that pipe. And still there's a visible gap. What I've done for now is tape the piece that I cut out of there. I put some Gorilla Glue on it and some Gorilla Tape, and I've just set that in there. So at least now when we put this up there in that gap, we aren't going to have an air gap there. I think maybe I'll put a piece of black vinyl over the whole thing when I'm done. The solar charge controller is installed now. I put a little piece of gaffer tape on this to hide up the crack there between the two pieces of wood. So you can see the battery is at 100% right now. And it thinks it's nighttime because I don't have the solar panel plugged in. Here is the pre-wired ports for the solar panel. There's not much room up here for anything but this one big panel. So I'm glad that I got uh, almost 200 watt panel to put up here. I think over in that corner, I will install a 24 volt panel to charge the batteries on the truck. But this one should work just fine because everything inside this tiny camper, besides the air conditioning, do not take much power. So I can just take these little plugs off the end here. The connectors for the solar panel have male and female plugs. So there's no way of connecting them incorrectly. Just press them on. And we're done. This is where I've decided to put the solar panel. That leaves me a small walkway right here so I can come up on a ladder, get up here. I'm going to put a little bit of the self-leveling lap sealant underneath each of the feet. Then I'm going to screw it down and cover the top. Just lob it on all over the place just like this. Make sure no water gets in. Everything is sealed up so I can move on to the next project now. I think right here, opposite of where I installed the other panel, I'm going to put my 24 volt panel. That panel's installed now, and I'm using the sealant to hold all my wires so they won't vibrate and blow around in the wind. Now I've tied up the original trailer wiring back to this point. This is as far as it reaches. I'll need to take a trailer wiring extension cable to bring this further back so that I can plug into this box, which converts the 24 volt signals from the trailer connector on the military truck to the seven pin connector that the camper trailer uses. 
Let's just connect them up right now and make sure that this works before I tie everything up. Now the box is plugged into the trailer connection on the truck. Comes up over to here, goes through the extension, and then over to the, the original trailer connection on the trailer. Let's turn the lights on, see if it works. All the trailer lights are on, and I left one of the turn signals on. So that we could see that working. Now, the brake lights, the turn signals, the license plate lamp, everything should work along with the truck. I just need to permanently mount the box somewhere and then tie up all the wiring. The holder for the propane tank is really coming along. I think I'm going to bolt it up here, that way it's removable. If I ever need to set the camper back on the ground, this won't be in the way. I will need a spot to mount the regulator either over here or on the other side. Not sure if I want to include a gusset for that or just a little bracket. Not sure until I get this bolted up exactly how the finished product is going to come out. Here's the final design for holding the LP tank. Very, very sturdy. That's not going anywhere. Regulator is mounted over here. And I still have this connector for using an external grill or griddle, whatever I want to plug into here. These are the steps that I'm going to use. These uh, accordion out, they self-adjust to the height that you need. I'm thinking about putting them up in this area in between the bumper and the truck frame. Try to hide it up there. Keep as much height and I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to use the pintle hitch afterwards, but I want to tuck it up there as far as I can. The stairs are mocked up now. There's a piece of angle iron that comes off the rear bumper on each side of the stairs. And then to make that a little more sturdy, there's going to be a piece that comes all the way across from each bumper mount right here all the way to the other side and then weld it onto the brackets that hold the stairs. And that should make it all sturdy enough. The other bar has been added in now. The stair mount is really strong because this is connected back there to the back of the bumper mount. And the stairs are also connected to the back of the bumper itself. Not only did it stiffen the bumper, but it made the stairs mount extremely strong. The stairs are done now. You lift this latch up, pull the top stair out. And there you go. If you want to put the stairs back in, And then there's a little locking pin that goes through here and keeps the stairs from coming out while you're driving. The old handle getting into the camper was pretty short, especially with how long these stairs are. There's one of the old mounts. I've left it there so we can hang things on it. So that I need to get this one mounted, cover up as many of the old holes, get it sealed up. The new railing is installed. Cassie's going to demonstrate how it works. It will be hot this weekend and I'm planning on not taking a generator with me. So I've stuck my Blue Eddy AC200 Max in here. This has a 30 amp plug. This is the same plug that the camper uses. So if I want to run my air conditioning, I can just plug it into here, turn my air conditioning on, and I can also recharge this off of the solar panels on the roof. Because this fits so well into my storage unit, this let me fix all of my electrical needs very quickly. All I had to do was add my solar panels on the roof so I have a way of charging this during the day. And now I have an inverter powerful enough to run my air conditioning as well as its own built-in battery. That's going to be it for today. I have a lot of work still to do, but today I'm going to go camping with it. So if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe. Thank you.